dear students today in this lecture we will be going to solve a numerical problem in which we have to draw shear force and bending moment diagram and uh, the beam is a simply supported beam with overhead as well as you can see uh, from this diagram this beam horizontal beam it is simply supported in between and uh, it has two overheads and which and this beam is loaded with the concentrated loads at both the ends and uh, uniformly distributed load is applied on the simply supported portion of the beam now first of all going through the statement of the numerical we have to draw the shear force and bend one diagrams for the beam shown in figure and uh, in this figure there is simply supported beam c a b d which you can see and uh, in the middle this beam is uh, having two supports and it is simply supported so this beam will be a classical case of a simply supported beam with overhang on both sides so you can see here ac is overhang as well as bd is overhang and the beam is simply supported between supports a and b and about the loading this beam is uh, having two concentrated loads at the ends on the both the ends at 16 kN load at end D and uh, 4 kN load at end C and in between the simply supported portion that is AB beam is uh, loaded with a uniformly distributed load having intensity 12 kN per meter now how to solve this numerical first of all we have to calculate the support reactions so here since there are two supports support at A and B and both are simple supports so there will be only one vertical reaction reaction ra at support a and the reaction rb at support b <coughs> now to solve uh, this type of numerical problem first of all we have to consider we have to assume this beam is under static equilibrium condition otherwise you will not be able to solve this numerical problem so first of all when you have considered this is a simply supported beam with overhang and uh, it is under a condition of a static equilibrium so we can uh, apply equation of static equilibrium and uh, those equation are summation of all the forces along y direction is equal to 0 y direction here will be the vertical direction and uh, summation of moment at each support whether it is support a or support b so we can say summation of moment at support a or support b is equal to 0 that mean in this step we have to calculate the moment of all the forces whether they are vertical or horizontal and uh, all the moment of all the forces about the reference point will be a section b that is support b or support a <coughs> now in first step we have to calculate summation of using uh, forces along the y direction that is sum of the forces along y direction is equal to 0 now here one sign convention we have to take into consideration if the forces are acting vertically downward then those forces will be taken as negative and the forces which are acting vertically upward they will be taken as positive so in this diagram in this uh, beam there are uh, three number of forces one is 4 kN another is UDL third is 16 kN which are acting downward so they will be taken negative and uh, another two reactions ra and rb they are acting vertically upward so they will be taken as positive so this will be the sign convention which we have to use now applying this sign convention condition uh, you have to calculate all the forces from c to d so when we start uh, traveling from c to d then we will uh, came across five number of uh, forces to vertical four vertical forces and one is udl which again it is Uh, vertically acting downward <coughs> so minus 4 because it is uh, uh, vertically downward so direction so sign convention is negative so minus 4 plus r is upward positive minus 12 into 3 is the total uh, force due to this whole udl so that means this udl when we convert it into a concentrated load equivalent concentrated load so then you can say This 12 into 3 meter, 36 kN will be a concentrated load just equivalent to UDL, and it will act at the mid of the span 
on which UDL is acting. So here we can uh, see that the whole UDL is acting between A and B. So that means 12 into 3, 36 kilonewton we can consider acting at the mid of AB that is 1.5 meter from A or 1.5 meter from B. So this is UDL uh, converted into force plus RB vertically upward and the minus 16 kilonewton. So these are all the forces we have sum up and uh, based on uh, the solution when we solve it we will get ra plus rb is equal to 56 kilometer this is the equation number a now you can see in, in this equation number a there are two unknowns one is ra and rb so uh, according to mathematic theory <coughs> we uh, require at least two equations to solve two unknowns so second equation we have to develop which will be based on the taking moment of all the forces about a equal to zero now we will take moment of all the forces about a equal to zero and here sign convention will be when you are calculating moment and if that moment is clockwise as shown in the figure then it will be taken as positive and if it is anti-clockwise then it will be taken as negative so when we see here uh, when we see here this uh, four kilonewton force and this force kilonewton force will be applying the movement like that that is anti-clockwise in anti-clockwise direction so we have taken it as negative so this movement will be taken as negative minus 4 into 1 and uh, this then ra ra is uh, just passing through a so it will not create any movement so it, we are not taking moment of ra then the third force is udl so total load will be 12 into 3 so this is 36 kilonewton UDL and it is acting at the mid of the span so which is at a distance 1.5 meter from the point A so 1.5 we have taken here and RB now when we talk about the RB this RB will be applying uh, movement in clock anticlockwise direction so that is anticlockwise direction about A so this uh, okay let us make it more clear so then it is rb and the distance of point of application that is a from b is, is 3 meter so rb into 3 then the last one is 16 and this 16 kilonewton force is acting at a distance 3 plus 1 meter from a so we are taking 3 plus 1 4 so after solving this equation we are getting the value of a reaction at support b is equal to 38 kilonewton and when we solve these two equations then we will get reaction at support A is equal to 18 kilonewton and the reaction at support B is equal to 38 kilonewton. Now next step is step number two where we have to create, we have to develop the equation for shear force. Now for shear force we have to take different sections. So, uh, if you uh, see, you analyze this uh, diagram of this uh, beam then this beam one load is acting at d that is concentrated load and uh, that after that there is no load between b and d so you can take one section between b and d and after that there is some change in the load then you can take a second section between b and a and uh, another section we can take between a and c so according to the loading criteria pattern of load we have to take different section so we can take section between as told db between d and b portion then b a and a c so let us start let us start to derive the equation first of all so let us take any section xx at a distance d from the end d of the beam that means between b and d you can see here now this is the section between b and d and this section we have taken for the purpose of development of shear force equation and uh, this section is located at a distance small x from d that is the free end of the beam. Now we have to calculate shear force between d uh, and d. So for shear force since shear force is uh, the sum of all the forces with the appropriate sign convention either you can take in the uh, considering to the left side of the section or right hand side of the section so both we can do now in this numerical what we are going to do we are taking 
come to consideration all the forces which are on the right side of the section and all the forces which are on the right side of the section if they are acting downward then it will be taken as positive for calculation of the shear force so therefore when you have to calculate the shear force at a section xx which is shown in the diagram at a distance x from d only one force that is 16 kN is acting so then sum of all the forces mean only this force it is 16 kN now it is a constant value so that means one thing is very much clear when you move from d to b there is no change in the force and so no change in the shear force so ultimately shear force will remain constant between d and b that is just right side of the support d so we can calculate shear force at d is equal to 16 kilonewton positive and just right of b it is also 16 kilonewton because just left of b when we take section then uh, these two forces will come into consideration now how to draw the diagram you have to pick the value now here we have to draw now this is 16 kilonewton positive and after that another point will be just left uh, right of the b that is again at a distance 16 kilonewton which can indicate so this will be the diagram this red color diagram is diagram for the shear force between b and d now next point we have to uh, take the calculation for the shear force now point uh, set portion under consideration is between b and a so that means we have to take a section between b and a so we are taking again a section xx between b and a which is at a distance x from farthest point that is d now we have to calculate we have to develop the equation for shear force now at this current section and what we have to take into consideration we have to take the summation of all the forces on the right side of section now right of section there are three forces one is 16 kilonewton second is 38 kilonewton and the third one is udl on portion between the section and point b so let us uh, develop the equation so shear force at this section xx is equal to plus 16 then minus 38 then it is again downward plus 12 into now on the portion where this force is acting now how much is the portion this portion will be under consideration only so on this portion what is the length of this portion that we can get easily this portion is having a length of x minus 1 so that's why we are multiplied with x minus 1 so by this way you can uh, easily calculate shear force now this section or this equation particularly is applicable between b and a portion and it is um, beyond a it will not be applicable now in this equation if you uh, visualize you analyze then you will find that uh, this is the portion where x is uh, appearing now here x maximum power of x is 1 so it is a linear equation so that means from this equation we are able to know that what will be the shape of the shear force diagram between b and a so when we have to calculate shear force we will calculate shear force just left side of b because in the just right side of b we have calculated so just left side of b you is very easy to calculate you can put the value of x equal to 1 in the above equation and we are getting shear force just left of b is equal to minus 22 kilonewton and just right of the a now distance x will be 4 meter you can put the value x equal to 4 in the above equation and you will get the shear force at a is equal to plus 14 kilometer and similarly uh, as we have solved the numerical between portion b and d and just similar to that you can take a section between a, a and c and you can even consider all the forces on the the left side of the section also so after doing the calculation what we are getting we are getting shear force at c is equal to minus 4 kilonewton and the shear force just at the left of a will be again minus 4 kilonewton and uh, at a it will be uh, there will be just a rise in shear force from minus 4 plus 18 so for that we can easily draw the diagram 
now by taking all the values now you can see here shear force at d is 16 kilonewton so it is above the reference line since it is positive and then it will remain 16 kilometer up to d so that's why we have drawn a line which is parallel to x axis and uh, at b there is a sudden change in the shear force and uh, it has dropped from 16 kilometer positive to minus 22 kilometer now when we uh, take into consideration point c that means section c here shear force is minus 4 and after that no change in loading pattern so shear force is again constant again minus 4 line will be parallel to the x-axis and there is sudden uh, rise uh, additional 18 kilometer so when we add it so you get 14 kilometer so above this line the shear force will be positive and the below shear, the line reference line shear force will be negative now when you have to analyze this diagram we can analyze it with the various steps so very first step is yeah, you can see here uh, at this at D so wherever there is concentrated load you will find shear force will be having a vertical line so that means how many uh, concentrated reactions are there or forces are there 16 kilometer shear force is vertical at 38 shear force is again vertical line at uh, A where uh, vertical force is acting shear force is again vertical line at C shear force is again vertical line and the second observation is between two points or two sections on a beam if there is no change in force so that means no force additional force is acting then your shear force will remain constant and that will be parallel to the x-axis and the third observation is the points or sections between where UDL is acting so shear force inclined uh, line will be an inclined line and that means it is crossing somewhere to the axis or reference line so shear force is here changing from minus 22 to 14 and it is linearly varying and uh, crossing the section uh, crossing the reference line that means somewhere it is zero now next is bending moment diagram in this how to draw the bending moment diagram for that we have to develop bending moment equation now when we talk about bending moment then according to definition of bending moment when you have to calculate bending moment at a section xx then you have to take into consideration movement of all the forces either on the left side of section or on the right side of section that means sum of all the movements again we have to take the sections at appropriate location so we will be going to take section between bd ba and ac and uh, what about the sign convention that is very important part of any numerical problem sign convention when the force is trying to sag the uh, beam then shear for uh, bending moment will be positive and when the force is trying to hog the beam that means hogging create time to create the hogging shape then bending moment will be taken as negative so sagging bending moment will be positive and hogging moment will be negative so we have to take the section again between d b b a and a c now let us again similar to previous shear force uh, equation we have to take a section xx let us taking a section xx at a distance x from and d so this is the section and uh, we will be taking all the forces into consideration which are on the right side of section that means we will be taking sum of all the forces about section xx on the right side of section so here when we talk about the portion db there is only one force so movement will be only due to this force now what will be the shape uh, if uh, it can this beam uh, this force can uh, uh, bend this beam then this shape of this beam will be like this so this is known as hogging so it will be negative you will say that sign convention will be taken as negative so we have taken here negative 16 into perpendicular distance from that particular location that is section x so it is 16 into x now x raised to power 1 it indicates it is a linear diagram so this equation is applicable between d and b so 
we can calculate bending volt d by putting x equal to 0 so bending volt d will be 0 and uh, when we put x is equal to 1 that means just the right side of the point or location b that is section b then bending moment you are getting that is minus 16 kilonewton and very easily we can draw the diagram it is a linear diagram here bending moment is 0 and uh, at b bending moment is minus 16 so we have taken the point below the reference line and uh, since it is a linear diagram we have joined both the points now another is uh, section we are taking between section between b and a so this is section between b and a again similar to the previous case it is at a distance x from d and uh, how to calculate the bending moment bending moment at x now here three number of forces are in uh, consideration which we have to consider one is 16 another is 38 and third is portion of the beam that is ud electrical so first of all minus 16 into x then 38 now if we talk about whether it is sagging or hogging then you can consider that uh, this force uh, that is rb is equal to 38 when if we it bend then it will bend the wheel like this so it is sagging type of a bending and uh, when it is sagging type of bending movement will be taken as positive so that's why we have taken here positive sign 38 into and distance will be x minus 1 and uh, then third one is udl now when we are talking about udl how is udl bend the beam then udl will bend the beam because it is applying the load downward direction then it will bend the beam like this so it is again a hogging type of a shape so we are taking here negative minus 12 is intensity of the udl x minus 1 is the portion of the beam on which it is acting that is from uh, axis which we have taken and b distance and uh, it will be acted at a mid distance so it is x1 minus 1 by 2 now when we analyze this equation you will find that in this equation third parameter that means third part of the equation will give you x raised to power 2 that is second degree of equation will be there so when there is second degree equation then the shape of the curve will be parabolic so bending moment you can calculate just at the left of b by putting x equal to 1 it is minus 16 kilonewton and uh, just the right of a it will be minus uh, 4 kilonewton meter so similarly is uh, you can uh, take it between a section between a and c now important point here of consideration is here the bending moment is varying from minus 16 kilonewton at b to minus 4 kilonewton at a so minus 16 kilonewton at b and minus 4 kilonewton at a but since it is a udl it, and it is a simply supporter so somewhere at the mid of the beam you know that bending moment will be positive so it means the curve will be moving from negative to then positive and then negative so this will be the diagram now you can see here the here movement is negative here movement is negative and somewhere at the mid or so at some location bending moment is here is positive so this portion is positive bending moment and this is negative this is negative so when we solve the right part that is ac then you will get bending moment c0 and bending moment a is minus 4 kilo so this will be the complete diagram of